Mr. Obama, I've been for you from the start. In fact, even before the start. This picture of us together was taken in 2004, before you were even elected to the Senate. Right away, I was for you for the presidency, not just at some time in the future, but already in 2008. I thought you had the potential to be one of the greatest presidents ever. I still do, but I'm beginning to wonder. I'm still for you, Mr. Obama, but I'm beginning to wonder whether you're for us. You're certainly not showing it on this tax issue. I'm wondering whether maybe uh, all these crazies talking about you being a Muslim have led you to decide that you ought to be meek to show that you're a Christian. Maybe you're trying to practice the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, let me tell you, the meek aren't inheriting anything right now. The people who are inheriting things are the super rich, taking in more and more of the money of our economy. And somehow the Republicans have convinced people that they shouldn't even pay any taxes on it. The estate tax is not a death tax. It is a spoiled brat tax. It's a Paris Hilton tax. It should be reinstated now. I'm an historian of the Great Depression, and I happen to know a thing or two about what causes economic collapses and what works to fix them. And I can tell you one thing for sure. Tax cuts for the rich do not solve depressions, recessions, or do anything good for the economy. Republicans in their shills on Fox News and talk radio think that if you just keep repeating something over and over again, you'll get people to believe it. And sometimes they seem to be right. The latest lie that they're repeating, and no matter how many times you repeat a lie, it's still a lie, is, quote, you can't raise taxes on anyone during a recession. That is simply not true. And no matter how many times you repeat a lie, it's still a lie. Since I mentioned Fox News, let me do the Glenn Beck thing and show you on the blackboard. A lie is like the number one. No matter what power you raise it to, no matter how many times you multiply it by itself, a lie to the millionth power still is a lie. And this lie is not only one that is helping rich people, it's one that's hurting the economy. We are at a place now where the richest 1% of Americans have almost one quarter of all the income and they don't want to pay taxes on it. We can't let that lie continue. The Republicans take it as a matter of revealed truth that we can't do anything to help the really needy but that it's a moral imperative to help the truly greedy. Tax cuts are totally unnecessary for the very rich. What we need is not a faith-based economics, but an economics that's based on reality, on what has happened in the past. And this has been tried in the past. In 1993, President Clinton and the Democrats raised the top marginal tax rate to 39.6%. And all the Republicans wailed, just as they're doing now. They said it was going to destroy the economy. We'd go into a depression. It would lead to disaster. The Democrats then, though, had a little bit of backbone, and most of them stood together. And while every single Republican in Congress voted against it, enough Democrats voted for it to put it into effect. Instead of being followed by disaster, it was followed by a great period of prosperity and ultimately a balanced budget. On the other hand, when President Bush came in, they repealed that tax, put the top tax rate for the very rich down again, saying that this was going to not hurt the deficit at all and result in prosperity. Well, it resulted in prosperity for the very prosperous, nothing whatsoever for the middle class and the number of people living in poverty increased, and by the way, the deficit skyrocketed, and oh yes, after that it was followed by a total economic collapse. So should we take their faith-based economics to try this yet again, or should we deal with facts? But you already know all that, Mr. Obama. In the recent campaign, you said the Republicans were counting on mass amnesia among the voters, forgetting what had caused the economic collapse. Somehow you seem to have contracted it now yourself. This isn't rocket science. When President Clinton raised the top marginal tax rate to 39.6%, it was followed by prosperity for all and a balanced budget. When George W. Bush lowered the top tax rate on the rich again, it was followed by the rich getting richer, everybody else stagnating or going down, and finally a collapse of the economy as well as a huge deficit. That's not rocket science, that's Republican racket science, and they want to return to it now. Don't let them do it. There is no reason to extend the tax cuts for the wealthy, nor is there any need to do so. What the Democrats need to do is as simple as it is easy. 
simply pass the tax cuts for 98% of the people making less than $250,000. Pass that in the House. Send it to the Senate. Let the Democratic leaders in the Senate bring it up for a vote. <clears throat> and then let the Republicans dare, if they will, to filibuster it. And make them really filibuster it. None of this stuff about, oh, we don't have 60 votes, so we won't try to bring it to a vote. Let the Republicans go out there and say, we're going to stop a tax cut for 90% of the American people. This is no time to be meek. That This is a time for doing what's right, what's moral. Just do it. You people don't even seem to have the courage of your convictions when you're in a no-lose situation. If you make the Republicans filibuster in favor of the rich, it'll show everybody whose side they're really on. And as far as worrying about what the public thinks, a poll just taken the other day shows that only 26% of the American people want to continue the lower tax rates on the rich. In fact, only a bare plurality of the Republicans want to do it. You guys do need to show strength, but I'm not going to say to you what so many people are saying. I'm not going to call you pussies or say you need to get some balls. The reason I'm not going to use language like that is that language is a big part of the problem. It's based on the idea that everything that's associated with males is superior and everything associated with females is inferior. That's the sort of thinking that we'd expect from the Republicans, from the regressives. Progressives need to think about things in a different sort of way. I'm going to try to get your attention by thinking about new ways of expressing what the lack of power represents. You really do need to get a pair. Democrats, you need to grow a pair. Grow a pair of ovaries, Democrats. Stand up for what's right. Stand up to the billionaires and their army of mercenaries and the Republicans in the Senate. Make them filibuster and show who they're in favor of. Do it. Do it now. Woman up, Democrats. Don't let the Republicans walk all over you and all over us.